this would still apply if we're hypothesizing a Russian nuclear strike on the US. This still works. I don't know if Finland and Sweden actually need to be in NATO to be protected under a nuclear umbrella, under under the mutually assured destruction. That being said, all European countries are realizing right now they are not prepared for the kind of escalation that we're seeing caused by the Ukraine conflict. 1600 methods of delivery, including ICBMs, bombers, and including MIRV warheads on SLBMs. That's a lot of methods of delivery. We've been speculating about what are the possibilities, what could happen in an actual nuclear war. Um, so we're going to look up, uh, for example, what are the countermeasures for ICBMs, uh, how, how realistic it is to have a, um, an actual response to, to nuclear war or not. Uh, well, I think the UK and France would be a target for Russia, seeing as UK and France have nukes. Uh, UK and France also have some of the best planes, yes. Uh, UK has some of the best air defense in the world. We are a small island, so we go heavy on protecting the skies above us. The problem is, uh, we, we, like, we go back to mutually assured uh, destruction. So, like, I, I don't know what the UK contingency plan is for the, like, the dead man's trigger. When it comes to France, France constantly has um, nuclear subs deployed with, uh, with nuclear payloads on those subs. So even if France gets completely destroyed in, like, n in the next five minutes, we all fucking die. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, nuclear submarines that are that have that have ICBMs that are going to be able to strike back, and then we, once again we're within the nuclear with the mutually assured destruction paradigm. That is why, for example, it's pretty damn unrealistic that there's a first strike happening. We're rocking the Einstein here, yeah. Now, when they say the world has fifteen thousand warheads, does that mean a single one of those warheads are similar or stronger in power and diameter or whatnot? No, that's just the warheads. Some of them are tactical nukes that are going to be uh, really destructive, but in a limited space. Uh, some of them are going to be like the Tsar Bomba, uh, nukes that can uh, that like flatten everything in in like a huge range. It really, really, really uh, I could depends. And I could be in pain and like breathing, like spitting my lungs out. Thanks for the follow, Dolo V1. Uh, it, it counts all of all nuclear warheads, regardless of their type. If you don't eat food filled with carbohydrates, fats, and especially cholesterol-filled fats, you are fat phobic. Oh, and if you go to the gym. So this is in 2020, November 17th. Uh, in the first of its kind test, the U.S. has successfully used a small ship-fired missile to intercept a target ICBM, according to the Missile Defense Agency. The successful test shows the U.S. military now has another missile defense system capable of defending against North Korean ICBMs aimed at the U.S. The U.S. Uh, MDA and U.S. Navy sailors aboard an Aegis ballistic missile defense system equipped the destroyer intercepted and destroyed a threat representative ICBM with a standard missile. Block 2A missile during a flight test demonstration in the broad ocean area northeast of Hawaii. A target ICBM missile launched from Kwajalein Atoll in the Republic of the Marshall Islands in the Pacific Ocean traveled thousands of miles towards the body of water between Hawaii and the west coast of the U.S. mainland. The destroyer USS John Finn that was positioned in those waters then fired an SM-3 missile that successfully intercepted the target ICBM. The interceptor missile was directed towards its target using tracking information provided by an array of sensor systems designed to monitor any incoming missile attack on the U.S. Previous interceptor tests have been carried out with the much larger ground-based interceptor missiles based in Alaska and California that are designed to prevent a North Korean ICBM attack on the U.S. The successful ship-fired missile test shows that the, another layer of missile defense could become available to counter North Korea's growing long-range missile inventory. Last month, it unveiled what appears to be the world's largest mobile-launched ICBM that could threaten the U.S. and its allies in the Pacific region. Are ICBMs the strongest of nuclear warheads? ICBMs are basically the strongest of uh, delivery methods for, uh, for the warheads. That is the... or, or at least they were historically. Uh, how do they fire? They, it seems that they use sensor arrays and it's, it's just like a missile, uh, right? The, the SM-3 missile, I'm pretty sure that's a standard missile, but we can double check. The standard missile 3 is a ship-based surface-to-air missile system used by the U.S. Navy to intercept short and, uh, what was it? Where was it? A short and intermediate range ballistic missiles as a part of the Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense System. It is also being deployed in an anti-satellite capacity against a satellite at the lower end of low Earth orbit. U.S. has only counterfuge measures. U.S. so unprepared for basically everything. I mean, yes and no. Like, ironically, the fact that they were preparing this so they can mount it to a truck, um, I would assume so, yes.
it seems like it's something they've been mostly working on uh, on mounting on ships, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, the the the, uh, the the perceived threat, the perceived threat was uh, North Korea. Like where this is a twenty twenty article, so it makes sense that we didn't have um, that Russia was not con a consideration. This would still apply if we're if we're hypothesizing a Russian for, uh, nuclear strike on the U.S. This still works because well, we're talking about uh, nukes flying over. Uh, like over Alaska and over um, over the Arctic. That uh, doesn't it need electricity or fuel. Uh, those kinds of uh, missiles usually just need fuel. You do need electricity to power the sensors and and all of the systems that uh, that direct the targeting of the missile, but the the missile itself is just fuel. Russia, China, Iran, Pakistan, North Korea sounds scary, not gonna lie. Dude, I, I've said it time and time again. I'm so fucking sad that uh, Trump destroyed the Iran nuclear deal. We were finally... Uh, Obama was, fi had, was finally successful in building actual diplomacy in the Middle East. That is not, uh, that is not pure fucking um, like imperialism. Actually finding a compromise with Ir Iran being if if iran if iran had been um like a, a u.s ally it would have been so fucking positive for for everyone i believe i never took rockets in engineering that's actually that's actually super inter interesting oh you're an engineer w what kind of engineer missiles need double a energizer batteries yeah what's the fuck that reminds me of the japanese like um just imagine this is a this is a rocket instead. Yeah, I did electricals. Nice. I'm a I'm a software developer or like a software engineer if you if you will. But the, um, I've dabbled with uh, uh, with uh, electronics as a hobby, like uh, building stuff on breadboards, programming programming little uh, like uh, chips and, and stuff like that. It's really uh, it's a really really cool field. Alucus <laughs> Rosary. I actually wish I did mechanical, but maybe another, another life. Hey, it's never too late. Oh, cool! I tried messing around with Python. It was awesome. Yeah, Python is really cool. It's it's really really powerful. As long as you don't need like, as long as you don't need the performance, Python is really good. <laughs> um, I did the car game lol, Pretty easy for you, I guess. I I I don't. I have never really developed in Python, but yeah, it's a pretty easy language to pick up. Uh, this is my second time watching your stream. Maybe you've already addressed this, but what are your thoughts on Putin threatening Finland and Sweden uh, uh, over joining NATO? Um, I'm, so uh, uh, this is a really interesting question to me because it, um, it tests the limits of the European Union. Um, let, let, me, let me just go to, uh, to full screen for a second. Uh, so yesterday I, I did some in-depth research on, um, on the European Union because bo both, uh, so both uh, Sweden and Finland have signed the Lisbon Treaty. In 2009, the Lisbon Treaty had a very important clause added to it, which is, um, which is the clause 427, which on paper is a mutual defense clause, just like NATO Article 5. However, uh, there are two subtleties to it. First off, NATO Article 5 um, contains an explicit, refer uh, an explicit phrasing of military intervention, which uh, Lisbon Treaty Article 42.7 does not contain. Uh, secondly, Article 42.7 contains a provision that is very vaguely termed, which says that countries, uh, countries have to show support uh, under Article 42.7, but they are, are not expected to threaten their own security which is a very, very, or their own security policy, which is a very, very vague phrasing, which uh, from what I can tell, uh, political scientists interpret it as allowing basically every EU country to do what they want, which I think is very problematic. When we, when, if we look at NATO as a successful alliance at deterring attack, it's, it's because uh, Article 5 is uncompromising and unambiguous. Uh, Article 42.7 being ambiguous is problematic. Now, on the other hand, uh, both Finland and Sweden have signed separate pacts. Uh, mutually, mutually, they, they participate in mutual defense pacts um, that are led by Germany. Um, the, one of the pacts is led by Germany, another one is led by France, and the third one is led by the UK. And this is where I think it's very interesting to point out that the UK and France are both nuclear powers. 
um, they're not the same level of nuclear power as, as the US, but I think it's very fair to argue that they both have mutually assured destruction capability, which means that if the UK and France um, are protecting their military partners at the same level US protects NATO members, then Finland and Sweden are under a nuclear umbrella, the same way they would be if they were in NATO. So this begs the question, do they actually need to be in NATO to be protected from Russia? Uh, there are arguments bo on both sides. Obviously, being in NATO would be a much stronger level of protection. Um, however, uh, yeah, sure, you, you can you can post the links in chat, Dolo. Uh, as long as they're not against TOS, um, you're fine. Uh, so... I, I don't I don't know so uh, from a purely like uh, pragmatic point of view I don't know if um, if Finland and Sweden actually need to be in NATO to be protected under a, a nuclear umbrella under under the mutually assured destruction that being said NATO is a much stronger protection and I also 100% understand given given what's happening right now I 100% understand why uh, people living in Sweden and Finland want that extra protection why they want to be uh, fully protected under NATO, under NATO and the counter argument to that is that if Russia is actually um, as dangerous as, as it appears to be then there, there perhaps is like an appeasement argument where uh, Finland and Sweden already have their level of protection, so maybe they actually endanger themselves by getting closer to NATO. Um, it's not clear to me. However, one thing that I uh, that does seem plausible to me is that it makes sense. It, it makes sense to me for um, for Sweden and Finland to join NATO now, rather than later when uh, when Russia is no longer embroiled in Ukraine. The idea being, Russia probably does not want to. Russia probably does not want to run a, a war on two fronts. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, France has land and sea nukes. Exactly. Oh, the UK has no land-based nukes. Interesting. I, I thought they had land-based nukes too, but it, it doesn't matter. Like bo both countries, both countries have them and uh, have both dead man switches and and um, and like first strike capability. Finland has fucked up Russia before. A useful af asset of NATO if they weren't to join. Oh yeah, there, there's no denying that um, that that Finland uh, like has uh, is, is very capable as well. Yo, watch this. Okay. <laughs> Okay, good one, dude. You got me. You rickrolled me. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, Finland has history with Russia, absolutely. Play Elden Ring. I unironically want to play Elden Ring, yeah. But I also want to finish reading um, uh, about um, like nuclear countermeasures real quick. So the US has, uh, has an intercept uh, system for ICBMs. You didn't play, it doesn't count. Well... Okay, I, uh, but I, I'm restreaming on YouTube too, okay? So I, 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 have, I have legal issues with that. Um, yeah, I think we have a few on land, but UK is super demilitarized. Yeah, I, all European countries are realizing right now that they are, they are not prepared for the kind of escalation that, um, um, that we're seeing caused by the Ukraine conflict. Intercept systems are memes. I think ICBMs can't be intercepted anywhere close to reliably. Yeah, that's the problem. How reliable is this? So, like, this article is really positive about it, but then when we look at the wiki, uh, wiki page for the SM-3 missile, it's uh, short and intermediate range ballistic missiles, not long range uh, ICBMs. Which long range ICBMs are the actual threat if we're talking about uh, MA an MAD scenario, say, between the US and Russia. Um, how realistic are nuke countermeasures? Why play Elden Ring when you can play knockoff Factorio Mindustry? <laughs> I've never played that. Watch this vid. Can we stop a nuke? Smithsonian Mag. Oh, right, this seems like a good article from... Well, it's a bit old. 2007. Fight for my love, mom and dad. Oppo find... Why, wait, why did you link me that? This is off topic, Tyranid. What are you doing? Uh, can't you just like rush them with some sort of suicidal seagulls or something when they get de detonated midair? Just five seconds, watch it. This is a 13 minute video, it's not five seconds. Okay. Well, that's over. Time to show you guys this thing. 
Oh, the embargo. Oh, oh the, the gnome. Oh my god. He fucking gnomed me. With the uh, with the Linus Tech Tips video. Jesus Christ. Okay, good one, Turnip. That, that was a good one. I was not expecting to get gnomed. That cloud in the article. A handful of uniformed U.S. service members and congressional staffers gathered in a windowless room in the headquarters of the Missile Defense Agency, tucked within a row of nondescript buildings on a low hill overlooking the Pentagon. The guests waited anxiously in the room, called the Management Information Center, watching several large computer displays on the wall in front of them. They were about to find, uh, they were about to find out whether the Missile Defense Agency could stop an ICBM by shooting it down with an interceptor missile. This would be the first test of an interceptor launched as though the country were responding to an actual attack on its homeland. Previous interceptors were fired from Kwajalein Atoll in the Pacific Ocean. This one was to be launched from California. The target rocket had been fired by U.S. forces on Kodiak Island, Alaska. On the screens in the Management Information Center, a red line progressing southward from Alaska toward the west coast of the United States represented its position. The target missile's path was similar to the trajectory that a Tepodong-2 long-range missile launched from North Korea might follow. The difference, of course, was that if the September test failed, the Kodiak-launched target would splash down harmlessly off the Baja Peninsula. The anti-missile system that is, by the order of President George W. Bush, being fielded as it is developed, is a complex web of layered defenses, each aiming at a separate missile threat. Some are meant to thwart missiles as they rise from the pad, the pre-boost phase, while others are designed to destroy them as they descend towards the target, the terminal phase. The flight time between the two phases is called the mid-course. Mid-course defenses are the only ones currently fielded against long-range threats like ICBMs. The focal point of the agency's September test of its ground-based mid-course defense system was the interceptor missile, launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. According to plan, it would rise out of the Earth's atmosphere and release an infrared-seeking projectile called a kill vehicle that would collide with the target somewhere over, over the Pacific. Watching the red line's progression across the screen in the Information Center, Air Force Lieutenant General Henry Obering, director of the Missile Defense Agency, had something to prove besides the capability of hitting a bullet with a bullet. Obering, who had spent seven years helping NASA launch space shuttles, compares the feelings surrounding a missile test to the emotions evoked by a shuttle launch. It was kind of scary, because with all the models and simulations, you just didn't know exactly what was going to happen until it did. With this test, his agency was attempting to redeem itself for a series of failures that had called its competence into question. The lack of mid-course interceptions in the MDA program also suggested that the technology was not mature enough to handle the task. Since they were initiated in 97, mid-course defense test flights have had mixed results. Between 99 and July 2001, Three of five intercept tests had ended in success, but there had been a four-year lull in mid-course intercept launches, and only failure when they were restarted. They, the last time the missiles flew, in December 2002, the kill vehicle did not separate from the interceptor that carried it. Two years of work followed, during which Obering took over the MDA. Engineers from Raytheon Company cleaned up the design and began production of the kill vehicles at their Tucson, Arizona facility. The first mid-course intercept of Obering's tenure was supposed to take place on December 15, 2004, but on that day the interceptor never appeared. A launch computer refused to let the interceptor leave its test silo on Kwajalein. The $10 million test target, already arcing through the fringes of space, fell into the sea. That's, that's quite a failure. Yeah, the fresh one where it sent 1,000 nuclear ICBMs, 2 and 5 is 400. Yep. That's uh, that's far far less of a success per success percentage that we would need. Orbital Sciences Corporation, the interceptor's Dulles Virginia ma manufacturer, had programmed the rocket with the within the with the tolerant tol ah, sorry tolerances can be used like an octopus to suffocate and pull apart my enemy's arguments. Thank you for the follow, Edu uh, VF VFX. Uh, this is probably quite outdated at this point. Article from 15 years ago plus the classified gap. I agree, yeah. Uh, this is obviously going to be outdated. Um, and what this shows, however, is that the the project basically got picked up again. <laughs> New waiting room, yeah. Oh, is this uh, so, someone... And I understand. So, someone was mad at me yesterday for having the World War Three waiting room title on the stream. So I I'm going to chill a bit on the clickbait. I mean, Russia only showed attacking Florida with their new missile in 2018, and that's just Florida. Wait, I'm in Florida? Oops. 
Missile defense is offensive because its only purpose is to increase first strike capability. Uh, there's an argument for that as well, sure. Or rather, well, not, not for, well, yeah, first strike capability in the sense of minimizing uh, MAD, uh, like the plausibility of MAD, where your, your first strike takes out a, a large part of the opponent's nukes. And then uh, their uh, their dead man switch retaliation gets shot down by your by your deterrence. Did you order Yodin pills, Daddy? No, I don't have Yodin pills, dude. Uh, in Europe, I, I don't know if it's in the rest of Europe. In, in France, all salt has Yodin uh, included to it in it. Okay. Yodin <laughs> dank means okay. Yeah, I pronounced it wrong. Fuck you. Uh, so they programmed the the rocket with the with the tolerances of a satellite launcher, iodine. When the few sat status reports failed to reach the interceptor's flight control computer, it aborted the launch as though there were an expensive satellite aboard. The problem was fixed by writing a new line of computer code. Obering's team tried again in February 2005. This time, the interceptor refused to leave the silo when one of the three support arms designed to keep the rocket upright during an earthquake failed to retract. Another $10 million target was wasted. Shoddy work at Kwajalein was blamed for allowing salt water to seep into the base of the silo, making the air humid and causing glue in the support arm's hinges to swell. After that, even the most vocal supporters of the missile defense plan advocated by George W. Bush blasted Obering's agency. One Republican congressman from Alaska, Terry Everett, then chairman of the subcommittee that oversees missile defense, declared that he and his fellow members were disgusted by the failings because, to be honest with you, it didn't appear to be brain science. What is non-brain science? Uh, brain science as opposed to what? I, I, I don't get it. Every nuclear country should just get to keep, like, five nuclear subs, problem solved. That would be really good, yeah. And that, that's, that's like what nuclear de-escalation was slowly pushing towards, but I, that, that ship, that, that sub has sailed, sadly. Hand out nukes to kids, yeah. What the fuck did you slink me, Chinchilla? Lukashenko, Putin, <laughs> yeah, this interview. Uh, yeah, let's watch it afterwards to have a laugh after this uh, uh, serious topic. Wait, was it, what was I reading? Oh yeah, I was reading this. Until some country killed the treaty, I know, right? Um, inside the missile agency's head headquarters in September 2006, the red line of the target grew on the display map for 16 minutes and 40 seconds before a blue line appeared on the Southern California coast. A brigade with the Army's Space and Missile Defense Command had launched a single long-range interceptor from a silo at the Vandenberg base. So far, so good. At least the interceptor was airborne. If the U.S. comes under attack, plans call for interceptor missiles in Air Force bases at Vandenberg and Fort Greeley in Alaska to roar out of holes in the ground to the fringes of space, where they would release the 155-pound kill vehicles. Even as interceptors are being deployed, the U.S. has already fielded 14 interceptors in Alaska and two in California, the Missile Defense Agency must continue to develop the system through a series of $100 million tests for 16 interceptors?! 16 interceptors against thousands of nukes we're fucked there this is no this is impossible and they're so expensive there's no fucking hope when when one looks at what must go right in the first minutes of an actual attack it's easy to see why obering's job is uninviable and his agency's budget so fat so vast an attack would first be detected by U.S. Uh, Defense Support Program satellites, which sense the infrared radiation of enemy missiles rising from their launch pads. The first generation of the system was launched in the 70s, but upgrades in new satellites have brought modern capabilities to the space imager system. The satellites would tell ground radars where to look in the sky to find the enemy rockets after their engines burned out. The ground radars, someday to be augmented with sophisticated ground and space sensors, would transmit tracking coordinates to U.S. Strategic Command Control Rooms in Alaska and Colorado, where members of a specially formed army brigade would pull the trigger on the interceptor missiles. Computers would feed targeting data to the interceptor missiles via fiber optic cables and satellites. These initial weapon task plans must arrive before the missiles blast out of their holes so that their nozzles can be pointed at the incoming warheads. All that must happen within 16 minutes. Any later, and the defense would fall to radar-guided rockets or terminal de defenses fired as the warheads are falling through the atmosphere towards their intended victims. 
Most terminal systems, such as variants of the Patriot missile battery and the terminal high-altitude area defense, are designed to target short- and medium-range theater missiles, not long-range ones. Assuming the interceptor missiles make it into the air by their deadline, information from ground-based radars will provide the interceptors with updated information on the target's location as they rise to meet them. As the distance closes, the interceptors will release their kill vehicles. By this time, the enemy missiles will have dissolved into a hail of objects streaking towards the United States at perhaps 15,000 miles per hour. Inside that cloud of warheads, inflated Mylar decoy balloons, shaped and painted to look like real warheads, could distract the kill vehicles, if not for the guidance given by their infrared eyes and small thrusters. If all goes well, each kill vehicle will collide with an incoming warhead at about 18,000 miles per hour. Until new sensors are created, finding the real warheads among the decoys requires a shotgun approach. If I can't discriminate what's a decoy and what's a warhead, I have to launch interceptors at all of the objects. But in September 2006, the goal was to direct a single kill, kill vehicle to a single target warhead, using upgraded tracking radar at Beale Air Force Base. Right, let's see if they succeeded. That was, this was in 2006. They achieved the intercept. Okay. Now, this is 15 years ago, so... Um, okay, I'll, I'll catch up with chat real quick. And this, this was at a time where, where Russia was not in the equation. Anyways, let's catch up with chat real quick. Hashtag safe nukes. He shall not finish the article. I did not finish it, but I, I skipped the ending. Come on. I haven't been able to find death estimates from the aftermath, the nuclear winter and destruction of industry. I mean, it depends, man. It, it, it depends on, on a lot of the scale and like who, who gets targeted and stuff. Someone said to me yesterday, you know we have missiles that can intercept nukes. Oh, sweet summer child. Yeah. Russia would probably have mass nuke the interceptors first, then aim for the nuke spots, then major cities. So little cities and villages are safe. Go there. I, the real safe part is like fucking South America. No one's going to nuke South America. And no more Star Wars. Fuck. Ber Bernie's anti anti Disney Star Wars. And no more Star Wars. Brutal. I, I I thought I thought Bernie was on the SGW side. Is he also mad at Ray being um being uh, Mary Sue? What the fuck? Thought he was a feminist. Um, so Russia would probably oh yeah I already read that. If every country gets fi like five nu nuclear submarines, what about Mongolia? Yeah, <laughs> Mongolia gets airship nukes. The force disagrees. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that was 15 years ago. Then in 2020, we have more successful intercepts, but this time with ship-launched systems. Oh, this is an interesting uh, read. This is this goes along with the uh, trend was saying that uh, nuclear deterrence is actually an escalation of the risk of nuclear war. A new U.S. De missile defense test may have increased the risk of nuclear war. Um. So, the SM-3 interceptor successfully destroyed an ICBM target in the test. With this milestone, the SM-3 Block 2A becomes the only, only the second US interceptor type to exhibit this capability. The consequences for strategic stability and future arms control are serious. Since the late 90s, US homeland missile defense efforts have been scoped around defending the country from a limited ballistic missile threat from North Korea and Iran. Earlier post-Cold War efforts focused on a wider range of potential threats. Because Iran does not currently possess an ICBM capability, the nominal threat today concerns North Korea, which has conducted three ICBM tests involving two separate missile designs. Beyond North Korea, however, Russia and China have long expressed concerns that the United States seeks to counter their capacity to use ICBMs against it. These concerns have intensified since the US in, 20, in 2002 withdrew from the 72 Anti-Ballistic Miss Missile Treaty. The 2019 U.S. Missile Defense Review notes that the U.S. relies on deterrence, as opposed to missile defense, to protect the homeland against Russian and Chinese ICBMs. But officials in both countries have expressed concerns that U.S. homeland missile defense efforts undermine their strategic nuclear deterrence. 
they have reasons to think that U.S. President Donald Trump remarked during the launch of the MDR that the core U.S. missile defense objective is to ensure that we can detect and destroy any missile launched against the U.S. anywhere, anytime, any place. The president's former national security advisor, John Bolton, similarly, similarly cited China as one of the reasons why we're looking at strengthening our national missile defense system here in the U.S. In November 16th, 2020, a U.S. Navy uh, Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer, USS John Finn, launched an SM-3 Block 2A interceptor, a missile designed to quickly ascend from the Earth's surface and kinetically strike ballistic missile reentry vehicles outside of the Earth's atmosphere, using what is known as hit-to-kill technology. Minutes earlier, a target missile... Uh, we already read about the experiment. Though the MDA has not clarified the nature of the specific target missile, distances between Kwajalein Atoll and the Pacific Ocean northeast of Hawaii fall short of the roughly 8,000 kilometer distance between North Korea and Hawaii, and the similar distance between North, North Korea and the northwestern United States. Because missile reentry vehicle speeds increase with range, this test would not have been appropriately representative of a North Korean ICBM. Moreover, the target missile likely did not incorporate sophisticated or even rudimentary countermeasures or other missile defense defeat measures, including multiple warheads. Overall, the November 16 test marks just the third successful demonstration of a U.S. hit-to-kill BMD interceptor against what the MDA describes as a threat representative target. The ground-based mid-course defense system, the only U.S. missile defense system built from the ground up to address ICBM-class threats, has succeeded twice in such tests in 2017 and in 2019. FTM-44 was a congressionally mandated, mandated test, motivated in part by North Korea's demonstration of an ICBM capability in 2017. The MDA had earlier suggested that the Block 2A variant of the SM-3 missile would be capable of defeating ICBM threats. Later, the M MDA explicitly denied that the Block 2A interceptor was designed to manage ICBM-class threats. Rattled by North Korea's rapid missile advancement at advancements in 2017, the U.S. Congress took action, guiding the MDA to explore the SM-3 Block 2A ad adaptability to ICBM threats. Section 1680 of the 2018 National Defense Authorization Act directed the MDA to evaluate and demonstrate, if technologically feasible, the capability to defeat a simple intercontinental ballistic missile threat using the standard Missile 3 Block 2A missile interceptor. Earlier testing of the missile focused nearly exclusively on medium and intermediate range threats. The 2019 MDR reiterated plans for the SM-3 Block 2A's adaptation for counter-ICBM role, describing it as an underlay for GMD that may ease the burden on that troubled system. Thus, the FDM-44 test represents a realization of latent capability, at the direction of Congress following the first North Korean ICBM flight tests in 2017. So. My understanding of what we're reading here is that it is a success, but it is definitely not an actual protection from, from like a real um, coordinated attack, say from Russia or China. If those are the hypotheticals we're thinking of, we're talking about thousands of ICBMs being launched, potentially. Um, I mean, for Russia, it's thousands. For China... China nukes, I don't know how many they have. 260 total warheads. Okay, so not thousands. But still, uh, it is not clear that the US has that many SM-3 missiles in the first place, even if they had a 100% kill rate. So... It may save you from some rogue ones, at least. Yeah, I mean, this, this project was clearly designed with uh, North Korea in mind, or Iran. It was designed with, the, with rogue states capabilities in mind. Uh, it is, however, not at all a project that ha that has, um, that pr that changes the nuclear balance between, say, Russia or China and the U.S. China's slacking. China need to get their money up. We, I wish we were in a world where that was not going to be a consideration. But maybe, maybe, maybe China's going to start building nukes again. Who the fuck knows? Yeah, mutually assured destruction still being a thing. Absolutely. This absolutely doesn't stop it. Dudes, I'm going to go get some sleep. All right, good night, I'm done it. All right, what did I miss as well? So from 15,000 warheads divided respectively to the countries that have those, mainly Russia and the US, how, many, how are those divided? As in how many missiles of each type does that amount to? I don't know. 
I, I, I don't know how many actual ICBMs there are. There might not be thousands of ICBMs, on the other hand. Also, if Paris gets nuked, I mentioned this yesterday, and you don't get vaporized. Go to the highest floor for one to two weeks, and the fallout won't be as lethal. Good to know. Um, I'll remember that, I guess. But I'll probably just die, dude. I, I, I literally live in, in the cent like in Paris. My best hot tub streamer is streaming. No hard feelings. See ya. All right, no worries. Sounds sounds like I need to uh, sounds like I need to do another hot tub stream because I have I have done a hot tub stream in the past. You have missed some sick content, okay? I I actually have an anime schoolgirl bikini that I wore for the for the hot tub stream. Yeah, another one. Maybe. Hey, maybe maybe during the ski trip there there's um uh, I, I I I I wouldn't stream from the swimming pool if there's other people and, and stuff, but that that may be a thing. We we could do like a swimming pool uh, stream perhaps. You can look it up. Of course, it's probably not all of them, but countries have to make their numbers public under start. Uh, let's see how many ICBMs. How many ICBM Russia? So this is what's the date? Why is there not a date on this article? Who the fuck writes articles without dating them? Come on, dude. I would prefer the nukes get to me. I wouldn't want to live in the post-apocalyptic world. That's a fair stance to take. I would prefer surviving, uh, unless it's like the horrible. Um, unless, unless it's like full-on fucking. Um, radiation sickness, in which case, yeah, it's better to die right away. I see LGBT, you're a straight or no, I'm bisexual. Uh, that's the most annoying thing when you're trying to reference and there's no date. Yeah, it, it like invalidates the, the, the whole information. List of nuclear weapons. Yeah, but the, the, the thing is, those lists are usually just warheads, right? They're not the actual ICBMs. I mean, maybe, maybe they are. Uh, yeah, this is like a, a list of explosions, actually, or like models, rather. Oh, they are? Wait, sorry. I Should I have continued scrolling? Oh, nuclear artillery shells. Missile and rocket warheads. Okay, I see. But th there aren't... Th those aren't numbers, though. Like, we don't know how many there are. Top of each country section? Oh. Yeah, maybe, maybe I should actually read things. I, I don't see it. Like, for the US? Am I blind? I, I literally don't see it. Seeds in the source. Date published, 2022... 0217. Damn. Thanks, Mammoth. Under headline, main article. Oh. There we go. Okay. Alright. Land bay, blah, blah, blah. Land based ICBMs. So, 450 missiles in 2012. Then there are the air based delivery systems, which we have to keep in mind uh, Russia also would have, like stealth bombers and that kind of stuff. Chat, is he blind? Chat. So, we have 36 nuclear armed. B-52s, and 13 B-2 spirits. Oh, the B-52 is not stealth, but the B-2 is stealth. Okay. And finally, submarine-based ballistic missiles. Um, which, uh, 14, 14 subs, which have a maximum of 24 missiles. So that's 14 times 24. That's a lot. Holy shit. That's like a couple hundred as well. So as of 2018, it's 200, uh, 203 SLBMs are deployed. Yeah, what exactly is Russia aiming for with seven thousand nuclear warheads or so? That's mean the whole existence. No, no, no. It's a. Uh, there's they not they're, not. they're not aiming for anything. Uh, decommissioning nuclear warheads is really fucking expensive. Okay, you, you you want you want Russia to decommission nukes? They don't need that many nukes. They don't want to have that many nukes. You want to, you want them to decommission nukes? Pay for it. They don't want that. They can't. Have, they don't want to waste money on it. There's a fire at the nuclear power plant in Ukraine. Can you link me? Or I'll, I'll Google it. On the right in the table, it gives you summarized numbers. Oh. 1,600 methods of delivery, including ICBMs, bombers, and including MIRV warheads on SLBMs. That's a lot of methods of delivery. And say Russia. Strategic arsenal, 1,588 as well. So yeah, we're at, we're at 1,000, uh, 1,600 um, options on both sides. As a result of the shelling at the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant, a fire started. The exact location of the fire is being specified. The CCTV cameras at the plant show flames and smoke. Oh, there's no sound. That's really fucking scary. God damn it. Where's the flames and smoke, though? Am I blind? Is this the flames? Oh, yeah, is, this, this looks like flames. Yeah, this is the flames. Oh, no. 
Uh, from the B-29 Super Fortress of World War II to the B-52 Strata Fortress. We're really good with names, yeah. Um, yeah, so this isn't Chernobyl. Imagine cluster bomblet nukes. I'd rather not. Good luck with your 14 interceptor system. I was 14 in 2007, but yeah. Ever played the strategic war game? It's called Command and Conquer. Sadly, no. I haven't. Uh, I haven't read it. I don't think the Russians are that reckless. I if if this is if this is true, this is a hundred percent an accident. There 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 is no there there is no fucking way. There is no fucking way. Um, the Russian army actually wanted to cause that. Like no, no matter how how bad and evil the things uh, the Russian army does are, um, this is just not achieving anything for them to to trigger a nuclear catastrophe in in Ukraine. Yeah, hopefully it's just the surroundings of the plant and the the actual plant's uh, safeguards are still in place. Hopefully. <laughs> 